I don't know what's happening. I'm okay. You're on. You're on. Thank you. All right. We gratefully acknowledge the generosity of the sponsors of learning, Year of Learning, Friends of Steve Vigder, Simcha Melech, and Mayor Leib Halevi, Friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha Bas Rivka, Isaac and Evelyn Blacher, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Bas Iser, Friends of Lynn Leone Meiselman, Leah Sabra Bas Hanach Zundel. Two months of learning, friends of Milton Meller in honor of his 85th birthday. Month of learning, Chaim and Phyllis Reese in memory of his father, Mordechai ben Yom Tov Lippa, and her father, Pinchas ben Avraham. Isaac and Evelyn Blacher in memory of his mother, Zisselbas Chaim Yitzvah. Reuven and Susan Podolsky in memory of his mother, Fredel Vasraga Feivel, Rabbi Dr. Yaakov and Malka Hoenig in memory of his sister, Chava Basa Rav Simcha Binyamin, his brother Tzvi Aaron Zev, Ben Harav Simcha Binyamin, his father Harav Simcha Binyamin, Ben Harav Yosef Yitzchak, and her mother, Sosha Bas Hoenig. Uh, and a uh, month of learning by P. 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 Pizer in memory of her sister, Rita Gin Greenberg. A week of learning, the family of Danny Shepitovsky in memory of their father and grandfather, Daniel Ben Arendov. Marsha Fried and family in memory of Milton Yitzhak Mordechai Ben Avraham. And a day of learning by Ralph and Honey Heifetz in memory of his mother, Esther Lieber Bas Yoshua, Robin and Rabbi Zvi Karpel in memory of their aunt, Chaya Perel Bas Gimpel Yaakov, Jay and Florence Levy in memory of his mother, Yitta Bas Rav Ephraim. Okay, as I said earlier, I wasn't really informed I'm doing the DAF today. So no, I Ruben, was supposed to, Ruben was supposed to do it today. He didn't know that. He asked me yesterday. Well, he's, it was a century village moment. Okay. Okay, so I'm doing the best I can. Right, as I I'll, said earlier, please don't ask any questions on DAF Bays. It's word for word the same Gemara about beds we had in Moed Cotton, and we didn't understand it then, so I don't expect us to understand it now. On Nun Vav Amit Aleph, the top of the page, the Mishnah. Another, again, we're discussing what do words mean, and therefore, how is the Anetter applied based on how, what the common understanding of a word is? So as a prelim, in, uh, Mishnaya, Mishn at the time of the of Rebbe, in the time Mishnah was written, people typically had two-story houses. You only owned one half. You lived downstairs. Somebody else lived upstairs or vice versa. And there was often a veranda. There's a machlaikas, whether it was on the second floor or the first floor. And there was a hut there in front. So Hanoider Minabayas, if somebody made a netter, I'm not walking into such and such a house. Mutter Ba'aliyah. Since it's a different owner and a different family, you would be allowed to go into the upper floor. Divre Rebbe Mayer, that's Reb Mayer's opinion. No, it's one physical structure. If you use the word love house, you mean both apartments. Okay. Another min aliyah. On the other hand, if you made the vow that you weren't going to Schwartz on the second floor, Mutter Babayas, you would be able to enter Abramowitz on the ground floor. And that's agreed by both the Chachamim and Reb Meir. So Montana, who teaches the following Brysa? Okay, now, 
what we're going to do, since there are no psukim in the Torah referring to Nidorim about houses, but there are psukim referring to um, a tzaras on the walls of the house, we're going to learn psukim about definitions of houses related to tzaras and say that's what the Torah means for the various terms. Mantana Babayas Lurabos as Yotzia. Who is the Tana who teaches that the porch on the upper floor or the veranda on the ground floor, veranda or maybe if it's floor. a painted house, there's a lot of discussion about this, is um, that the word bias includes these outdoor structures. Babayas Laravas as Ha'aliyah. The word bias also includes the second floor, which would be Tome if the Tsaras was in the ground floor. So, of other two Tanoim in our Mishnah, who would have taught this Brisa? Amar Rav Chista, Rabbi Meir. It's Rabbi Meir. The E Rabbanan. If you tell me it's the Rabbanan, the Rabbanan automatically include the whole building in the word bias. So why would they need a pasuk? Amre Rabbanan Aliyah v'chlal bias. They already include the upstairs as part of the house. Lomeli krab bias l'ribuya. So why do we need a pasuk to include the upper floor? So it has to be Reb Meir. Okay, Abaya Omer, Abaya tells us, Afilu Tema Rabbanan. You could say that even that Brisa could even be the Rabbanan. Boyakra, and yet you still need the Pasuk for the case of Tzara'as. The Salta Daik the Chamina, because I might have thought the base Eretz Achuzas Chem the Pasuk says, the house which you possess on the land. Okay? So I might have argued the Mechavah Ba'ayesh may bias, that it's only the ground floor that's attached to the ground. Yeah. Are we assuming one person owns the whole? No, two people own. <laughs> two, uh, typically, it's two families. If one person owns both, he gets rent from the other guy. So from a halachic perspective, the other guy is the, quote, householder for at least the term of the lease. But usually it would be like co-ops today. You own your apartment, the guy upstairs owns his. So we're excluding... But it doesn't matter, is the point. Well... If you have, if you have a closed room, right? You have a ceiling. You have four walls. You have closed windows and doors. Then a dead person in that room would not transfer tuma upstairs. So the tuma from uh, Saras in the ground floor, you need a pasuk to get the tuma to go upstairs. So the ownership is not the issue. It's the impermeability of the second of the floor. Right. And now in this case, since the Pasuk attaches that Tuma to a building attached to the ground, you could easily have a Havamina that since the second floor is attached to the first floor and the hip bone is attached to the shin bone, that there is no Tuma upstairs. So you need a Pasuk to tell you there is, no matter what you hold vis-a-vis -vis a nether. Okay, and that's what we just said. So a motorhome would never have the uh, subject? That's above my pay grade, okay? okay? They didn't have motorhomes in, uh, <laughs> Yehu in Yehuda or uh, Israel. Okay. Aliyahu the lo mechaber v'arya. As I said, the second floor is not attached to the ground. So you need the puzzle. Okay. Come on, Azlahad. Oh. What? 
What? Mm-hmm. Oh, Kaman Azla had the Amar of Huna Barhiya Mishmei the Ula. So now we're going to learn a brisa that Rav Huna Barhiya says in the name of Rav Ula, and we're going to wonder: Is that Rav Meir or is that the Yerachachamim? Bias, but bias ani meicher lach. I am. I own both apartments. And I'm offering you to sell you the house in my house. That's the words I used. I understand them. Yes. Is that the upper or the lower? I would assume it's the upper. Okay. But it doesn't matter. I'm selling you part of the house. Okay. So, Marehu Aliyah. We're allowed to assume what he wants to sell you is the upper apartment, and that's what he can show you, the upper apartment. Time of the Omele bias, Shibibaiti. The reasoning is that saying, I'm selling you the house inside my house, that's what I want to sell you. So that would mean, without any other qualification, the second floor apartment. Okay. Now, Abel, supposing I said differently, supposing I said bias stop, I simply want to sell you my, my house. Now, again, I have a two story house, two separate apartments with no, I, not the apartment on, in or on my apartment. I want to sell you the house. So what would it mean? Enu marayahu aliyah. So I, you would have a reason of, reasonable belief. I'm talking about the ground floor. And I would be misrepresenting if I then showed you the attic, the upper floor. So lame Rebbe Meir, he. So we'll have to, we should travel, probably say, that Rabbi Meir is the one who made a distinction in the Mishnah on the on the uh, Ned there, so he would carry this same distinction, and bias with no qualification is ground floor, and bias with some qualification could be upper floor, okay? So no afilatema rabbanon, you could even say. This relates to the Rabbanan who call it, who don't make the distinction. My Aliyah. So what would they say the word Aliyah in this case would mean? Mm-hmm. I'll show, when I say, on, I would give you the, I want to sell you the nicer of the two apartments, which in more 99 out of 100 times is the ground floor apartment. Okay, next mission. Why, why wouldn't the, I want to say the bias mean, mean the whole house? Then I would say that. Because normally, again, it's like condos. If I own the ground floor apartment and the apartment immediately above it, and then I say to you, I'm going to sell you my apartment in Yarmouth, you wouldn't assume both apartments unless I made that clear. Okay, that I again, we're not we're talking about what do Nidorim mean. So what do you mean when you say I'll sell you my house? You mean the ground floor. Okay? All right. Next. Now this gets complicated. And again, we had all of this in uh cut. A neither min hamita. I'm not I make a nether, I'm not gonna sleep on a bed for a week, a month, ever, whatever my netter is. Mutter bedargash. I am allowed to speak, sleep on a dargash divrei reb meir. V'chachamim aimrim, but the chamim say, dargash b'chlau mita. Dargash is a, simply a different form of bed. Like in English, you might have a sofa bed, you might have a Murphy bed. So Dargish is just a different form of bed. And they would also include that you couldn't sleep on a Dargish. A neither min a Dargish. On the other hand, if you made a neither, I'm not going to sleep on a Dargish. 
Mutter Bamita, you would be able to sleep in a regular bed. Again, an Ameri a modern analogy might be if you made a netter not to sleep on a sofa bed or on a Murphy bed, that would not exclude a regular bed. Okay, so of course we need to know, and the Gemara very first thing, my Dargish. What does the word Dargish mean? Omar Ula Arsa Degada. They translated here a bed of good fortune. I think a better uh, translation is a display bed. And we all know some Hungarian who has this $10,000 velvet couch that's covered with plastic. And if one of the kids so much as comes within five feet of the couch, the kid gets a patch. Because God forbid this couch should ever be sat upon. Okay, I mean, you, you can envision what I'm talking about. So in Mishnayic times, rich people would have a dargish, a thing that's like a divan or, you know, like in the Romans, the thing with the curled uh, headboard and then a flat part. And it was on display and people did not normally sleep on it. So Amrule Rabbanan Ula, the rabbi say to Ula, Hadatanan, but we already learned. Now, this is a story. The king's father died, long lived the new king. They went and they buried the old king. And then they came back and they made a Sudas Habra <coughs> for the newly uh, uh, anointed king. Okay? Keshen Mavirinaiso, when they give him the Sudas Habra, Kol Ha'am, Mesubin Al Ha'aretz, all the people who accompanied him home sat on the ground for the meal. And he lay down on the dargish. So the Gemara wants to know, if a dargish is merely a piece of expensive display furniture, the whole year, the, the then prince and never sat or lay on the darkness, his wife would have killed him. Okay. And now when he's an Ovel, he's going to sit on it for the first time in his life. How could, that doesn't make sense. So that is a challenge to Ula. Okay, <laughs> so now Ravina is going to defend Ula. Maskifla Ravina. Ravina argues with the argument. Me de dahave abasar v'yayin. Why shouldn't the king sit on the dargish? While he's an onain, he can't eat meat or drink wine. Okay, and during the whole year, Lakula Shasa, E boy Achil, E boy Lo Achil. If you choose to eat meat and drink wine on a Tuesday night, you do. If you choose not to, you don't. So now, if they're bringing the king wine and bread and meat, okay, who Yuma, Anan, Hevi, and Lay, they here they brought him meat and wine. Now, again, we usually use an egg or beans for this Suda Savra, but here the idea was to show that Aninus is over. So he could now halachically eat meat. So they gave him a meat and a little wine. And then we also learned elsewhere that you're supposed to give him 10 cups of wine when he's uh, an Ovel to, to take his mind off, to get him a little shaker and take his mind off the loss. So we, we have a pattern of giving wine. Okay, so that takes care of that. So Ella, Hakasha. So if you want to challenge Ula, do it as follows. The Sanya, we have a Brysa. Darga, Shlohoya, Kufayhu. You, 
<laughs> there is a halacha, which we no longer are no hate to follow, that when somebody dies in a house, you much. invert, literally flip over the bed of the Abelim, and a Bryce or a Mishnah says, and not only the beds of the Abelim, but every bed in the building. Okay? So what do you do with a Dargish? That might inform whether a Dargish is, part, is a bed or not. The Sanya, we have a Bryce, Dargish, Lohoyu, Kopehu. You do not turn over a Dargish, Ella, Zakhfu. You turn it upright. Now, I don't know whether that means horizontally and you lift it so the front edge is on the floor or you lift one end onto the other end so the whole thing is standing upright. So see, we now we have a stickler problem because you don't leave it alone. So you can't for sure say it's not a bed. On the other hand, you don't flip it over. So you can't say for sure it is a bed. You do something weird with it that's not very informative vis-a-vis <laughs> -vis the negative. Okay? The e amat arsa the dogahi. If you say the bed is merely a piece of uh, display furniture, then why do you have to turn it over altogether? Why do you have to do anything with it? Why don't you just leave it alone? Vasanya, we have a, a brisa, a kaifa es mitaso. If you have to turn over your bed, lo mitaso bilvadhu kupa, not just your own bed, do you invert? Ela kol mitos sheeshbo bitachabayis hu kaifa. You invert every bed in the building. And so we don't invert the, uh, this structure but we do do something with it. Halakasha, that's not a problem. Turn the page. Mide dahave amita hamiyuchedes lekeyu. Okay. This rule of a dog is sometimes, I don't know, you're packing to go on a trip. So you put the suitcase on your bed and you load stuff in the suitcase. In other words, it's not impossible. It is actually frequent that you use the surface of a bed for functions other than reclining a human body. Okay? So, this dargage is like a, a divan that's in the living room that nobody ever sits on. But when your wife takes the dishes out of the break front, she piles them on the dargesh before she sets the table with them. Okay? So, if it is an object that is only used for non-people placement of things, then there is no requirement. It's not a mita, and you don't have to invert it. So now we see a dargish is not a bed, but we still have a problem of why it's upright. All right? Ella, ikasha hokasha. So if you want to challenge Ula, that was not successful. We try a different way. The Sanya, we have another, Bryce, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamil, Rabbi Shimon Gamil tells us, dargish matir karbito. All right. Vahu nofel me'elev. All right. If you can imagine, our beds are nothing like theirs. But if you can imagine uh, the wicker chairs at the pool, where you have straps attached to the frame, and they're woven, so they perform form a platform you can lit, sit or lie on. Now, if you can imagine putting a mat uh, or a, a thin mattress on top of that, that would be one form of bed. Now think about like 
uh, you have a sukkah cot, or at least when you owned the sukkah, you might have had a sukkah cot, which is a flat piece of canvas with loops on the side that you slide the frame onto. Okay? And then there's a third kind where you have ropes that are compl uh, completely wrapped around so the frame is obscured by the ropes. That's more like the one outside. So if you could imagine now, not the loops on the canvas, I'm doing my best at explaining this, but ties. So you have the flat piece of canvas and then 20 cords and you would tie, you'd put the thing and tie it to the foundation, to the frame. Michael. Okay? Yeah. The art scroll has illustrations. I know, I know, but I don't think they do much. All right, the first illustration with the black, with the bows. That's the first Dargesh we're talking about, okay? So Ula, uh, Ella, Ikasha Hakasha, this would be the problem. The Sanyi, we have a Brysa, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel Oimer, Dargesh Matir Karvitov Nafel Meola. A Dargesh definitionally would be structured in such a way that if you loosen the bows in the picture of the one with the black top and the bows, the platform would drop to the floor. That's what that price says a Dargesh is. Okay? The E Dargesh are the God of But if a Dargesh is made like an expensive piece of wood, a bed like furniture that's there to show off your wealth, then it wouldn't be something that you could just loosen a couple of knots and the thing would collapse. Okay, Karbitin ma mi isle. Why does it have these these ties? I'm sorry. What did you want? It's a couch living room is different from the bed. Yeah, but you people, you lie down on it and read. I mean, you could, but what this is saying, Rabbi Gamliel is saying, it's like a cheap camp cot, and he, who's going to put a cheap camping cot? In the living room, you're going to put a beautiful, expensive piece of furniture. That's the objection to Rabban Gamlia. Your point is the objection to Rabban Gamlia. Okay. What? Well, I know I'm objectionable, but your the object is your question is exactly what they're challenging Rabban Gamlia. Okay, Kiyosa Rabin, when Rabin came from Israel to Babel, he made the following comment. She'il te hahu me Rabbanan. I asked one of the knowledgeable rabbis, Rev Talicha Bar Ma'arava Shnei, and his name happened to be Rav Talicha, the Westerner, the Have Shiach. And he used to hang out in the workrooms of the people who made things out of leather. And he would watch them work and he became knowledgeable about their techniques. The Omar Lee, and he said to me, You want to know what a Dargesh is? My Dargesh? Arsa de Sala. It is a, like a leather sofa. In other words, the platform portion of a dargesh is a stretched piece of leather. Okay, that was his answer. Okay, Itmar, we have a Brysa similarly. Ezoho Mita Viezahu Dargesh. What's the difference between a bed and a dargesh? Omar Rav Yirmiya, Rav Yirmiya explains, Mita Mesurgin Oisa Al Gaba, a regular bed 
has the ropes that are woven together to perform like the springs by analogy that we would put a mattress on. Those ropes are wrapped around the side pieces, okay? And cover the side panels. So there's a rope and it's going up and down and a rope the other way going up and down. And these ropes are close together like a woven piece of fabric, okay? Whereas Dargish misorginoso mi gufo. With regard to a dargage, they would drill holes in the frame and have um, like ritsuos coming out from the leather platform and they'd stick the ritsuos through the hole in the frame and then knot it off. So that would be the last little picture of the four little pictures. Well, it doesn't matter what kind of bed it was. I, I'm not sure why they were. Because we're, what we're trying to figure out, if I say a netter, I won't lie down on a bed. Can I lie down on a couch? And if I can, what's the difference between a bed and a couch? The couch, the couch. So we understand that because our furniture is far more differentiated than theirs. They used to sit on the thing in the daytime and then put, then put the mat on it and sleep on it at night. So the kind of structure you have determines whether what your netter meant. And then they're going into all this. In Moed Cotton, they went into all of this because of the requirement of turning over the beds and if you could cop uh, out that this is not a real bed, you wouldn't have to turn it over. So for both Avelus and for uh, Nidorim, we're trying to draw distinctions. And this fellow who knew this uh, Rav Tachlifa, who knew how the furniture makers, makers made furniture, tried to show us a difference. That's all. Again, this. I, we have to learn the Gemara. The Gemara is talking about lifestyle uh, 2,000 years ago. So now we're going to challenge that explanation. So according to Rav Tachlifa, the manner in which the structure is created is the distinction. But we're going to challenge that from a Brysa. So a tiny bit of background. Something made of wood cannot be come tame, it's not macabre tuma, until it has the label, the shame, keili. Okay? T some, most wooden kalim have something called a base kibel. They're hollow, they can hold water, a salad bowl, a wooden spoon. But you could have a keili that doesn't have a base kibel, a ladder. Okay, there's no base keeble, but it's clearly a keili. Now, a bed is basically a, a bunch of boards. At what point does it stop being a bunch of boards and does it start being a keili? So it's macabre tumor. Okay, mesve. They challenge the distinction that Rav Khalifa made from the following Mishnah. Kli eight may aim aside macabre tuma. At what point in the construction uh, uh, timeline do wooden utensils become capable of becoming tuma? Hamita vaha arisa, a bed or a child's bed, okay, may she shufim or hada. All right, Ba'or Hadag simply here means sandpaper. They use the rough skin like of a shark or a sturgeon to sand wood. So at the point where you sand all the boards, so they're no longer rough boards, they're nice, beautiful, smooth boards, that's when they're called a keili and a candy macabre tumor. Now, if you're telling that a bed, a typical bed, 
has ropes completely obscuring the planks, then what's the point of sanding them? Nobody sees it anyway. Okay, the e mita miss togeres al gaba. If the ropes are wound around the planks and you don't see the wood, lomali shifas or hadab, then why do you have to sand it down? Okay, so therefore, Rav Khalifa's distinction doesn't hold up. And, a, and what's a thing called the bed, according to this Brysa, could have disp- display the beautiful mahogany wood of the bed frame and not have ropes obscuring the wood. Okay, Ella, what, how do we do, do it? Hava ho megufan, normal beds and the dargesh. You make holes in the side and you string the loops through and either tie them or wrap them, you know, in one hole and out the other and across again, etc. So you see the wood. Meet the ule abuke yametne. So in a bed, the straps go in and out of slits, out of slits, because you have wider straps. The dargesh ayoyle vaafuke vaafkosa, and with a dargesh instead of straps like the wicker chairs at you know or whatever they are at the pool, it's thin ropes, and that's where the Gemara ends up. That the difference between amita and the dargesh, and my advice is don't about to not sleep on either. All right, Kenny, are you coming tomorrow? Uh, I have Asher Hertzberg is going to do the dive. Okay, tomorrow. because I'm not going away. You're so not? I, no, but it, there's a snow, there's a uh, thunderstorm here this afternoon moving up the coast, and it's going to turn to freezing rain and then snow. Uh-huh. So we're not going. Okay, so he. I so if you want me asked, to do it, just let me know. Yes, yeah, so I already he, asked. I spoke to him last night, and he agreed to do it tomorrow. Just tomorrow. At this point, yeah. Okay, so just let me know what you want me to do. Okay. Okay, call two. Right. And uh, go lie down on your target. I'm go- you're going to finish up to the Mishnah? Oh, didn't I finish? I no. thought I finished. Oh, we still got more to do. Okay. Now, I, I now we're talking do. about Tchumim and city walls. So I'll try and, if you can think about. You didn't the city finish. Of no, Bo- you're not there yet. What? Oh, I, where am I? Amar oh, Rabbi Yaakov. Oh, Omar oh, oh, Rabbi Yaakov. Okay. Okay. I was so busy trying to with the Dargish, I was getting tired. Omer Rabbi Yaakov Baracha Omer Rabbi. Rabbi Yaakov Baracha says the name of Rabbi. Mita Shnik Lita Shnak Liteha Yitzim. If you have a bed, it's a wooden, I know, square frame, and you have a headboard, but it's not a full headboard, it's one pole. And a footboard that's a pole on the other end. A two so you can bed. throw a canopy over the two poles. Okay, they used to make that for a chasen and cow. Okay, if you have that kind of a structure, mata shenek li teha yaitzin, a bed with the two posts sticking up, zokfe vidaya. You do not have to turn it over because you can't do it. It's okay to just stand it on edge. Amar Reb Yaakov Bar Idi, Amar Reb Yehoshua Ben Levi, Halacha Kareb Shimon Ben Gamliel. We paskin like going back to what Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel said, and that was that a dargesh is just a display thing. Okay, now. 
Think about the city of Boca Raton. The city of Boca Raton has a city limit. Century Village is not in Boca Raton, but we call it Boca Raton. Or think about the new city of Jerusalem. It is outside of the walled city of Jerusalem, but it is called Jerusalem. So if you make a netter not to go to the city, what do you mean? Do you mean the part, the city limits, but I can visit people in Century Village? Or do you mean the whole shebang of what's termed Boca Raton? And now beyond. Problem. Lost the sound as well as the picture's not moving. Hello? Now lost the picture. Oh, Miriam, I'm trying to reach Michael. He, he, we just. Oh, okay. All right. I'll call somebody else. Thanks. Oh, okay. I can't help you with anything? No, that's okay. Andrea, it's uh, Ken Green calling. They just lost the Zoom connection, it seems, or something in the library for the DAF. Could you please check on it? Thanks. Bye-bye.
Wait. Okay. Ella. Back on. Aruba. Abura. So we see from those two psukim that the area, the occupied area immediately surrounding a community is defined as part of that community. So Ema of Philobitluma. So maybe. We should include the Tum Shabbos of a community in the definition of the community. Because the Pasuk referring to the Tum of a city says, You measure the Tum from the outside limit of the community. So from that pasuk, we see the tchum is not part of the city. So another minabayas, now we, we've, that's finished. Now we're going on to the house. And why is the plane of the door rather than the plane of the wall, which is further out, the determining factor? Another minabayas, ena oser ella, He's not, it's not us, sir, to enter the house except from the closed door, the plane of where the door would close inward. Okay? Mm-hmm. But the door outward. Yeah, somebody else fixed it. Better. So if. The- okay overhang and a little balcony thing and then stairs down, you could stand there. So how do we know that? Okay, Masiv Ramari, Ramari challenges. The Yotzaha Kohen in a When the Kohen comes to check out the house for Tsaras, he it says he leaves the house. He goes out from the house and then locks it up. Yocho, yeah. The base so the yaskir. So we could imagine he ties a long rope to the door handle of the suspect house, and then he leaves that building, goes home to his house, and yanks on the rope to shut the door. Yachol yelech So he goes home to his own house, the yaskir, and then pulls a rope to lock up that house. Okay. Talmud Loma El Pesach Abayas. So the Pasuk specifically says he has to be by the entrance of that house. So Yachol Yama Tachas Hamashkov V'yaskar. So maybe he stands under the overhang above the door. That's usually called the lentil. That's the physical structure the door is set into and then locks the house there. Talmud Lomer min bias. Pasuk says, no, he has to leave the house. Achi him in a bias kulo. He has to leave the house entirely. Okay, son, so how does it work? He stands by out beyond that lentil. In other words, beyond the front plane of the wall, and then reaches in and pulls the door closed and locks it. So how do we know that if he did indeed tie a rope to and pull it closed from far away, literally from his own house? Oh, the score, or he stood under the overhang of the door and locked up the house in, while he was under that. Shahad Shahiskaru Muskar, that that locking, either the beyond the building or under the plane, beyond within the plane of the wall, but outside of the plane of the door, 
How do we know that that would be valid? Talmud Lomar, his gear as a bias, he locks up the house, meaning he has to close and lock the door. Mikol Makom, in any way that happens to be convenient. Okay? Now, Shani Gabi Bias. So we're trying to tell you that perhaps the halacha for a neder is different than the halacha of a Kohen declaring a house tumet. Shani Gabi Bias, maybe that's different. Dixiv min habayas. He has to go out from the house. min habayas kulo. He has to get out of the entire house. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, Rabbi Green. Yes. Have a good day. Take care, everybody. Oh, Thanks, time. everybody, again for their Hanukkah gelt also. Okay. All right. Robert Green, thanks everyone for Hanukkah Gelt. Oh, okay. Thank you, Juice. Thank you.